Hi there. How are you doing? Did you sleep well last night? I slept okay, but it almost felt like something was out of sync. But that's okay, because I'm so excited to be here at Kate's Grove Primary School to learn more about our inner body clocks and how they help us sleep. We also have Matt, who's got a really cool job. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Matt Jones. I'm a professor of neuroscience at the University of Bristol, which I try to make sound fancy, but really it just means that I run a team of researchers who are really interested in how the brain works. and We're particularly interested in what goes on in our brains during sleep. Wow, that is fancy. You know, the children here at Kate's Grove have some fantastic questions about sleep. My name is Shree, I'm eight years old, and my question is, why do we feel sleepy? Hi Shree, I'm Matt. It's so powerful, isn't it, when we feel really, really sleepy, and sometimes it's really nice. You know, we've just gone to bed and our heads hit the pillow, and it's nice and dark and cool. Feeling sleepy is great and you just nod off quietly. But sometimes you really, really want to stay awake and you can't. You just start nodding off. So why is that? Well, there are two main things that determine how sleepy we feel. One is how much sleep we've had. If we've had a lot, we don't feel so sleepy. If we've had a long day, then we start to nod off. And the other is our body clock, sometimes called the circadian rhythm. And our body clock determines that during the day, when the sun is up and the birds are singing, we're out and about, we feel less sleepy. And during the night, when the moon is up and the birds, apart from the odd owl, are, are, are asleep, then so are we. Our circadian rhythm. What is that? The circadian rhythm is really our body clock. So roughly once a day, we kind of reset. We sleep during the night, we wake during the day, then we sleep during the night and we wake during the day. And that cycle, that rhythm, takes about 24 hours, about a day, which is why it's called circadian, about a day. And that body clock really drives so many aspects of our lives. It drives when we're awake and we sleep, that's the, that's the most obvious thing. But it also drives when we're hungry, when we're ready to exercise. It also helps us to synchronize with all our friends and our family and make sure we're up and doing stuff when everyone else is up and doing stuff. So it's actually a really useful thing, and that's why almost every animal has a body clock. Plants have body clocks too. Think about the plants you know, opening up their flowers and turning towards the sun. That's also driven by the circadian rhythms. So in many ways, those body clocks kind of unite us all across the globe, which is a very nice feeling, isn't it? My name is Ananya. I'm eight years old. Why do we sleep sometimes and not sleep at other times? What a great question, and it's so important, isn't it? I experienced that myself. So sometimes we can sleep because everything's kind of in the right rhythm. We're trying to sleep when our body clock wants us to sleep and when we've been awake for a long time, so everything is aligned and we can drop off peacefully. But sometimes if we're trying to sleep at the wrong time, for example, if you got out of bed, went to school, and your teacher said, right class, time to sleep now, that'd be really difficult. And that's because you've had enough sleep and your body clock is telling you, no, guys, wake up now, it's the middle of the day. So imagine if you did a job that was out of sync with your body clock. So imagine, for example, you were um, a nurse or perhaps a policewoman or a policeman, and you had to work overnight doing shift work. That means that we're asking you to stay awake when your body clock wants you to go to sleep. That's really tough, isn't it? And that's really hard for people. It can take them a long time to settle into that new rhythm. And then when they come off shifts, when they have a break from their work, it can take them a couple of days to settle back down again as well. And there are some people whose bodies are just naturally like to sleep at slightly different times from other people. You might have heard them called either larks or owls. So larks are people who like to get up really early in the morning. And then there are owls who like to sleep later in the morning and get up later in the day and then go to bed later as well. So there's a whole mix of different body clocks across the world with different people preferring to sleep at slightly different times. Wow, everybody's got rhythm. My name is Krishika and I'm seven years old. My question is, do different ages have different circadian rhythms? Krishika, I bet you've noticed that they do. Well spotted. So if you think about the start of your life when you're a little baby, you sleep at all sorts of random times, don't you? 
and it takes a while for your body clock to kind of grow and settle down. It can drive parents a bit mad sometimes. When you're your age, I don't know, seven or eight, I reckon your body clock is perfect. It's so well aligned, you wake up nice and early, you're up and about, but you still go to bed at a sensible time as well. Now that might change, you might find when you become a teenager, for example, that your body clock shifts and you'll find it really hard to get up early in the morning. You'll want to have a lie-in. And that means, in turn, you'll find you want to go to bed later as well. So your whole body clock will shift later in the day and into the night. And that can be really tough for some teenagers because they still have parents nagging them to get up in the morning, even though their body is telling them to stay to sleep. Then, when you reach sort of middle age, then, I don't know, you just get on with it, really. Life gets a bit harder sometimes, take it from me. And sometimes it's harder to have a good night's sleep as well. And that gets, to be honest, slightly worse when you get really old. And you might have noticed, I don't know if any of you have grandparents, for example, who are always nodding off on the sofa and who need to go to bed quite early, but then can't sleep very late. That's another sort of shift in the body clock. So as well as being very personal to you and determining whether you want to get up early or go to bed late, your body clock also shifts throughout your life. My name is Sammy and I am just past eight years old. My question is, do animals have circadian rhythms? Sammy, I'm so glad you asked about animals because we can learn so much from them, can't we? And the short answer is yes. So the circadian rhythm, the body clock, is present in almost all animals. So. Think about your cat or your dog, for example. You see them sleeping at different times of day and night. And on average, they're roughly the same as us, right? If you think about your dog, it will do most of its sleeping overnight and most of its running around chasing sticks during the day. Um, so almost all animals have a circadian rhythm, but there are some extreme circumstances where that becomes very inconvenient and those animals are therefore adapted to either suppress or, or maybe slightly ignore their body clock. Think about nocturnal animals. So those are animals that are active overnight when we're normally asleep, and then they're asleep during the day when we're normally active. So they still have a body clock. They're still regulating when they're awake and when they're asleep. It's just flipped compared to ours so that they're, um, they're up and about when our heads hit the pillow. So there's so many fascinating examples of how Animals have learned to adapt their circadian rhythms to their environment, just like we do. My name is Nuri and I'm seven years old. My question is, why do emotions affect our circadian rhythm? Oh, Nuri, emotions are so important, aren't they? And they affect so many things in our life. But that does include our body clocks and definitely our sleep. So if we think back to one of the earlier questions about why can't we sleep sometimes, Sometimes if we're really anxious, you know, if we're really nervous about something, preparing for the next day, for instance, perhaps there's a, I don't know, a performance at school or a sports day that you're nervous about, that makes it really hard to sleep. And part of that is because our emotions, like our anxiety, does affect our circadian rhythms. Uh, and in particular, it makes it a bit harder to sleep. And then if it's a bit harder to sleep, then it's a bit harder to wake up. So that kind of interferes with your body clock a bit and then you'll be tired during the day and then you might struggle to sleep again and your body clock will get a bit all tangled up and so if you're not careful things can get a little bit out of hand but I'm sure you've got things in check Nervi and yeah you know, that's why it's important to keep all these rhythms going so keep going with the daylight keep going with the healthy food and the exercise keep going with the sensible bedtimes and that will bring your body clock back into line. Who knew our body clocks were so powerful? And helpful too. Thanks for all your really brilliant questions. It's been quite hard to answer them all. I hope we've done a reasonable job. Hmm. I wonder what it would be like to move along with our body clocks. If you'd like to try it with me, check out our next episode, Following Our Body Clock. Thanks again to Matt and all the children here at Kate's Grove School. See you soon. Bye! If you're having trouble falling asleep, it's important to tell your parents carer or another trusted adult that can help you figure out what to do next. The Sleep Charity's website has lots of tips and helpful advice about going to sleep. They even have a helpline where you and your carer can speak to a trained sleep advisor. Sometimes it's a good idea to pay your doctor a visit and let them know what's been going on. The important thing to remember is that you are not alone. Lots of people have trouble sleeping, 
but there is support out there which can help you get a good night's rest.